Yeah, right before launch, <laughs> which is a really a pain in the butt because I have to eat lunch, deaf, and I can't hear anything. Well, it can be an icing, but it is really annoying. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. There is some positives to uh, not being able to hear during lunch. Especially when the alar- uh, fire alarm come, like goes off, I can just be like, uh, guys, just don't talk to me. Just, just knock them <laughs> off and just be like, everybody's like plugging their ears. I'm like, la, 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 la. Hi, I'm Amy and this is Gabriella. And Gabriella is the world's most sought after babysitter. She has all of the skills. Not only that, she's my niece and so I get to claim her that way. And she is super, super just patient and loving and kind. Really just I love you. Okay. Um, okay. So we decided that while I was here visiting, we were going to do a YouTube video together. And we talked about it and we decided that the video that we're going to do is we're going to make hot chocolate bombs because hot chocolate bombs sound yummy. And so we have some little chocolate molds and this one's like a little heart one. And this one is a just an actual bomb circle one and we are going to show you how we're going to show you how to make hot chocolate bombs are you ready yeah okay um actually i don't know how to make hot chocolate bombs gabriella knows how to make hot chocolate bombs she's the one with all the brains right now and so she's going to tell us how to make hot chocolate bombs <laughs> so what's our first step um, first step is to get the stove ready, so you gotta set up a double boiler uh, to melt the chocolate in. And If you don't have a double boiler, can you just melt it in the microwave in a bowl? Yes, you can, but it's easier to do double boiler boil, or, um, because it just makes it so the chocolate won't... Uh, it stays, it stays liquefied longer. Like, mm-hmm. So you have longer to work with it if you're able to use a double boiler. It is possible to do this by um, chopping up the chocolate and putting it in the microwave. And if you were to do it that way, you need to make sure that you are heating it up for very short periods of time. When you heat up um, and try and melt chocolate in the microwave, the first time that you put it in there you might do it for like 30 seconds 45 seconds maybe even a minute after that you have to do it in 10 to 15 second intervals because if you heat it up either too fast or too much it it ruins it (laughs) it really does um the chocolate that i suggest is almond bark um, it's just a really easy melting chocolate, and it's just one of those easy chocolates to use. Yep. Okay, so we are going to see if we can uh, find a double boiler and get that started. Before you melt the chocolate, y- it melts significantly easier if you chop up these these well cubes. Cubes, yeah. Um, and so you need to chop these up into smaller pieces in order for this to work. So while Gabriella is working on chopping up our chocolate, I am going to tell you about how we are going to make a double boiler. Um, A double boiler just means that what we're gonna cook will be inside of a dish of some kind. We're gonna use this glass bowl because it happens to fit fairly well inside this pot. We'll fill this pot up with some water and enough that it is that the bowl that is inside is immersed in the water an inch or so. And then we heat it up um, on the stove so that the water, the warm water is what heats up the chocolate inside of your bowl. And the warm and then when you bring it over to the table and you start working with it, the warm water also keeps it liquefied. And so that's that's what that's what we're using for a double boiler. We don't have a fancy double boiler right now, but we have a couple of things that uh, we can make it work. Mm-hmm. Okay. And your chocolate doesn't have to be super small. It can just be just little pieces. It 
not super small. And now what we're going to do is we will put the chocolate inside our bowl. Dun, 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 dun. Chocolate in the bowl. Basically, you're gonna turn on your oven and then turn on uh, your the stove. steam. Hold on. It doesn't have to be touching the bowl uh, because the steam is what uh, makes the chocolate melt. It's not the water, and so that's why, like, you only, like, we have a very small um, pan, so we're only using, like, very little water because it's mostly the steam that's heating the chocolate up. And by the way, like I said, she knows what she's doing. I obviously don't. I thought that the water had to touch the bowl. Yeah, don't listen to me. Listen to her. Okay, so Gabriella gave a really great tip. She said, and here, let's look at. She said, you know, since we're using a fairly small bowl, that by taking out a few of the bigger chunks and starting to melt it with just the small chunks um, and getting that melted and then adding in the bigger chunks, you're less likely to spill it while, you're less likely to spill chocolate or get it all over while you're melting it. And uh, to determine if you have enough chocolate already so you don't have to melt the extra chocolate and then either have to do an extra step. So you just want to do the smaller chunks first. walk away in our house because it like helps it heats up like really fast. No, don't don't um uh, one thing you never want to do is if you have a glass bowl don't ever bang your spoon or your handle on the the glass bowl because it will chip it. Oh. or it could chip it. And the thing is, is that it could chip it without you realizing it and the chip goes in your food. Oh. And so you don't want little pieces of glass accidentally chipped in your food. So if you ever have a glass bowl, you can't actually do that. Do we need more? Um, yeah, probably. Just like two more chunks. So right about now you turn off your stove because the water's still hot. There's still steam coming from the water since it's still really hot. You just want to turn it off now because um, it'll just make it so you don't burn your chocolate. So now you just get a little bit, not that much, and then what I like to do is I like to move the chocolate around and you don't want a thick layer, but you don't want it too thin of a layer. You just want to get all over the mold. And once it's completely covered, uh, that's when you just stick it in the fridge to let it cool down. Okay, we're gonna see if I have, uh, have the skills so far, so good. Yeah, I need more chocolate. <laughs> and a tip that I got from an uncle, um, he said, um, basically what you wanna do is you wanna get more chocolate on the sides uh, so the remaining chocolate can flow to the bottom. Uh, so like your sides are not so thin. Okay, we got it. Off to the fridge. Freeze. Free fridge. 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 Or you can do freezer too. It doesn't matter. Yeah, let's do the freezer since there's. Okay. Okay, we're just gonna set it in here. You wanna set yours in or? Ta da! We just wait until the chocolate is hard, and then once it's hard, we do the next step. A giant heart. Da, 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 da. 
imagine eating this. Yeah, that would uh, take a while, I think. Yeah, especially if you were one person. <laughs> Just be like, ten. Like this could be your food source. Very unhealthy, though. But yummy. Very unhealthy, but yummy. <laughs> Don't you think it's satisfying? It is. It's kind of interesting to like. I like. I just keep thinking. I just need to turn it around and get the side some more. <laughs> to the freezer. To the freezer. <laughs> okay. So you want to make sure your uh, chocolate like sides are not too thin. That will crack. So mine are pretty thin right now. Um, if that's the case, you just do another layer. If it's uh, just thick, then don't do another layer. And then also, like, if when you're peeling and you think, oh, it's uh, it's good enough, and it cracks, you're not right. <laughs> then you're not right. <laughs> So it will feel like your uh, chocolate's being melted because <laughs> the uh, hot chocolate and cold chocolate. It um, doesn't go on quite the same way. Yeah. You kind of have to paint it on a little bit more on the sides when, and you don't need any more on the bottom. I put another layer on this and you can kind of see it doesn't necessarily go on super smooth but it's thicker on the sides because that's what we need. These had plenty of time in the freezer and part of the reason they had plenty of time in the freezer is because um, Gabriella had to run home because uh, her implants, uh, she has cochlear implants and her implants, the batteries, went dead. They, they don't last all day. Mm -hmm. Um, how long do you, how long do you think the batteries last as a general rule? Um, well, it depends. Like, sometimes it lasts, like, until I'm about to go to bed. Sometimes it lasts right at, like, 11 o'clock. Or it, it really... Before lunch? Yeah, right before lunch. <laughs> which is a really a pain in the butt, because I have to eat lunch deaf and I can't hear anything. Well, it can be a nice thing, but it is really annoying. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. There is some positives to uh, not being able to hear during lunch. <laughs> Especially when the uh, fire alarm come, like goes off, I can just be like, uh, guys, just don't talk to me. Just, just knock them <laughs> off and just be like, everybody's like plugging their ears. I'm like, la, 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 la. Tell us some, some of the challenges that you face because of being deaf. Um, well, one of the challenges is, like, I have to, like, because usually we go to our grandma's, and I have to remember, oh, we're going to my grandma's. We, I won't be close enough to just run home and change my batteries. I have to switch them out, and, like, it's just, it can be sometimes really hard to remember that because, like, if you went to the grocery store and you forgot to switch out your batteries and they went dead, then you're just out uh, of luck. <laughs> like, uh, guys, sorry, I, I can't get this today. <laughs> what about swimming? How does that work? Um, well, um, you, I just have to take off my hearing and I've tried, like, I can do a little bit of re lip reading, um, which helps. Uh, but usually I just swim and play by your body actions or your, I can sometimes read your lips, but you, you definitely have to be facing me. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So another question I have is, do you feel like that people treat you differently because of your hearing? Um, or have they ever? Like, yes and no. Like, it depends, like, once they get used to me with deaf and all that type of thing um then like they just treat me normal but like uh when they first meet me or things like that it's just like uh <laughs> so there's more questions when they first meet you and it, people tend to be a little bit more apprehensive about approaching you 
<laughs> but once they get to know you, generally speaking, people just treat, they don't, there's no difference. Mm -hmm. The one problem I do have is, um, like, if I'm walking away from someone and they say something, I usually can't hear. Like, um... One time at school, like, I was walking, and someone said hi to me, but they were behind me, and I had no clue, and then my friend uh, was like, they he, he just said... Aren't you going to say something? Because they just talked to you. <laughs> and I was like, uh... <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Gabriella also has a brother that uh, is deaf also and has cochlear implants, and I do know that uh, he has... Uh, at one point, uh, one of his, uh, one of his implants, one of the outside parts, do you mind taking it off and showing us? I can't hear you. <laughs> she can't hear us. Um, but one of the, one of these outside parts actually broke. Okay. <clears throat> and so, one of the outside parts broke. And when they, when it broke, um, they have to send it in to get a replacement, and during that time period, he only had one. And so he had, uh, he had, he only had it on one side. And so sometimes he would have trouble hearing the teachers. And when that would happen, a lot of times he would turn his head so that he could hear the teacher on the side that, that he had the implant on. And he a couple times got in trouble from teachers because they thought that he was maybe talking to somebody or not paying attention because he had his head turned. Now, you know, before you get after anybody or whatever, he, he just deals with it. It's just kind of par for the course. But it is something that, you know, that happens. And right now you only have one. I only have one on since uh, I only have three batteries right now uh, since one of them broke. So I had to plug in the two and put on one, so that's why I am looking at Amy and basically turning my head so I can hear her more. Yeah. So. Yep. And because they're really, they're very, very expensive, and so it's not like one of the batteries dies and you can be like, oh, well, let's just run out and go buy a new battery. It's like, let's go run out and buy a new car. Like, it, it may be not quite that expensive, but it is expensive. Okay, so back to our our little molds. We're going to pop our chocolate out of our molds. This next one, it's okay if it cracks a little bit. So, as you can see, it's like really smooth. So with hearts, you have to be a little bit more careful uh, just because the shape it's in. And so you have to like make sure you can pop it out and uh, it's pretty smooth on the outside. Okay, so now we have like to- chocolate packets. Yes, we do. <laughs> oh, I'm getting ahead of you. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Tell me what I need to do next. <laughs> okay, so now basically um, you get a glass plate and you uh, get some hot water and you put it under hot water till the glass plate is hot and then you dry it off and we'll show you what you do then. Oh, that's getting hot. <laughs> Okay, so that's probably hot enough. We're gonna just try and turn this off. And then I'm gonna make sure we dry this off so it works correctly. Okay, so now we got our hot plate. We're gonna take our chocolate and we're just gonna gently rub it like this and make it super smooth. Here, I'll show you again so you can see. see. So it just makes it so the uh, the pieces are smooth and that type of thing. Okay, and so let's do this one also. Don't press super hard or else it'll snap. So that's probably good. Ah, oh, and you also got a little heart shape. I did get a little heart shape, it's lovely. In order for it to melt, you have to have a hot plate or else it won't work. And you want to have a dry plate also. And again, it won't hurt work if you have a dry plate. If you don't have a dry I mean, plate. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we got it. Okay. And now, 
Oh yeah, yeah, you're actually right. <laughs> and now for the hot chocolate mix. <laughs> you're like, yay! I'm finally right. <laughs> okay. Oh. Do we do we need two of them or do you, or is one enough? One enough. One's enough for both of both things. Oh. Um, because this one doesn't need a ton. Yeah, that's true. So okay, let's see if we need to. We'll see. We'll see. So you only fill up one because, um, well, one half, one half. Yeah. Um, just fill up how much you think it needs like that much. Sure. I don't know. Let's see how much we can. Fill. Let's, do, oh, let's do this one. one because this one has a, yeah, has that's... more of an opening. Yeah, I think we need a little more hot chocolate. So I'm going to open this one. Oh no. Oh, I opened it. I'm not sure we do need more hot chocolate, but we're going to use some more anyway now. <laughs> Because we opened it. So we're going to fill it up as full as we can. And then you can fill up this one too. Just about it down. Just okay. Whatever. Okay. So you want to make sure you keep your chocolate um, until the end of the process. Um, so now you're going to take your other side. You're going to try and line it up as well as you can. Once you do that, you use your chocolate that you had melted right here. Which is why having a double boiler is really nice because if you did it in the microwave, then you would need to, of course, remelt the chocolate because it would be cooled off by now. Mm -hmm. But since it's in a double boiler, our chocolate is still actually Ready. Yes. So the one problem that we have is that we have to make sure it's cold down before we seal it. Be like you still want it running, but you don't want it super hot because uh, it'll melt your chocolate ball or your chocolate heart, and you'll have holes all over. So basically, so we just take it out and yeah. Um, here, let me put it on this towel. Yeah. Okay. So, um, we just washed our hands. Uh, so you want to make sure you do wash your hands before you do this. Um, and basically you scoop just a little bit like this. And you wait until it's, it, until you think it's pretty cold, uh, but still running. And then you're going to take your hot chocolate bomb. It's, it's still hot. <laughs> okay, mine's pretty good. So now you're basically going to take the line and you're going to wrap it around. Um, and you'll know if it's too hot because, again, you'll get a whole bunch of holes. And then you just do that whole thing around. And you probably want to do two layers so it succeeds. So it won't pop apart? Yeah, so it won't pop apart. You can take your extra chocolate and decorate your hot chocolate bomb. So once it dries, uh, you coat it one more time and then you hurry and put sprinkles or any other decoration um, on the thing, then, well, there you go. We'll see if we can find any um, sprinkles or decorations in one of these cupboards. <laughs> yeah, um, Gabriella is one of six children and so we opted to go over to my other brother's house <laughs> um, to record this video so that there was actually a chance that you would be able to hear us. <laughs> totally. Well, look what we found. Some sprinkles. Okay, and I'm super excited to have found sprinkles because right now my, my uh, paste job of pasting the two pieces together isn't the best and so my little heart is going to have some lovely lovely sprinkles around the outside edge let me grab a plate yeah I and mean, she'll be able to cover up her messy pasting i i will be able to too so i'm going to put a little bit of the the gold uh sprinkles out on my plate and i'm going to coat this what about silver? Like silver bits? That would be fun. Oh, that's a new way. Literally all I've been doing is like, sprinkle, sprinkle, make it 
Ya hay más. <laughs> I am so bad at this. <laughs> I'm having a good time. That's what matters. We're having fun. Oh, wow. I need a napkin to touch my chocolate with so that I don't melt it onto my fingers. <laughs> That's super sick. Mustache again. <laughs> now, like I was trying to get a mustache, and now I'm not. <laughs> and then I can't stop it. And that was good. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.